All right, folks, hello and welcome back to Online English Class. Today we're going to be talking about OTN3 uh, that you need to be finishing up by Wednesday at 3 p.m. Uh, and submitting your uh, outline, your completed outline to me by Wednesday at 3 p.m. We're going to be talking about that a little bit, uh, deepening our knowledge of the prompt, uh, addressing some oversimplifications that you can fall into and that you should not, uh, and then looking uh, specifically at the two uh, opening sources of the argument written by Brown himself. Okay, so before we do that, um, let's go ahead and take some time to remind ourselves of the top of the week announcements. First of all, make sure that you're taking care of your discussion grade procedure on a daily basis. Second of all, all right, throughout the week, we're going to be working on OTN3. We're going to be finishing up that by Wednesday at 3 p.m. I need your completed outline by Wednesday at 3 p.m. Next, all right, on Thursday, we're going to be spending some time looking at a content lecture, content lecture three, which is going to discuss how to effectively quote and cite and incorporate sources uh, in your argument. That'll be useful for both your unit six test, which is coming up the week after this, uh, and also uh, your quarter four essay, which is due May 18th through the 22nd. Okay. After that, we're going to begin on Friday preparing for your Unit 6 test. The Unit 6 test will be due by Tuesday at 3 p.m. That's May 5th. All right. Once we're, com uh, once we're done with this test, all right, our new content for the year is actually complete. All right. So typically in this time, uh, we would begin the process of preparing for your final exam. Now, your final exam is canceled. So uh, instead, we get to spend all of that time thinking about your quarter four essay, or if you're in the AP uh, uh, language class, preparing for the truncated AP exam that's on May 20th. All right, so let's go ahead and make sure that we finish these OTNs, uh, engage with this lecture, uh, and prepare for that unit test this week. Uh, looking forward to the fact that the course and the core and the new course content is very close to being complete. All right. So uh, aside from that, your last progress check, if you're in the AP course, needs to be completed by Tuesday at 3 p.m. Obviously, you don't need to worry about that if you're in honors and regular. So to concisely summarize, make sure that you complete your Unit 8 progress check by Tuesday at 3 and complete your OTN uh, and, and your outline for your OTN's argument uh, by Wednesday at 3 p.m. Aside from all this, keep working on your quarter four essay, which is going to be due anytime from May 18th to May 22nd. You can submit it to me electronically, obviously. Okay, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into our OTN, which is analyzing, again, how John Brown should be memorialized, right? You can think of this essay like a retrial of John Brown, right? John Brown died. Uh, he was executed after he was convicted of basically three charges, treason against uh, Virginia, uh, first degree murder, and also uh, conspiracy to attempt to free the slaves, all three of which, which, uh, all three of which were illegal uh, in Virginia during uh, the 1850s. Well, obviously, John Brown did not view himself as a traitor uh, to the United States of America, but rather a patriot, a servant uh, of it. And he also did not view himself as a murderer, but rather a justified fighter uh, in a righteous and a holy war against injustice and tyranny, okay? He did, however, believe that he was guilty of trying to free the slaves, for which he did not feel guilty at all, right? He felt justified in doing that, right? So uh, two really uh, 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 dangerous oversimplifications that you can uh, sort of base a misunderstanding and, and an uh, 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 argument lacking any kind of sophistication uh, in response to this prompt. Number one, John Brown killed people. Killing people is bad, so John Brown is bad, right? Or a little more nuance, right? John Brown didn't value life. Americans value life. Therefore, John Brown is un-American. Well, here's the problem, right? All throughout uh, the United States history and all throughout uh, the history of a broken world, okay, individuals who value human life, value liberty, uh, value an individual's inalienable right to pursue happiness and believe uh, that which is blessed in their own private heart and to pursue it have had to fought, uh, fight against, actively fight against individuals who are uh, in service of ideologies and belief systems that, uh, that are against those kinds of basic freedoms, all right? As a matter of fact, the nation wouldn't exist if there had not have been violent rejection 
of British colonial control of the colonies. All right, the United States as we know it uh, would not exist. Uh, perhaps a, a different nation would. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Britain probably wouldn't have maintained control of the United States forever, okay, uh, as they didn't uh, with Canada or with India or really any of their colonial territories. But, all right, the United States as we know it wouldn't have existed, all right? Uh, consider the ways in which uh, uh, norm most Americans, the normal American, uh, uh, approaches the armed forces who use deadly force, okay, uh, on a daily basis all around the globe in order to protect American interest. Now, the only thing that could possibly justify that kind of uh, uh, that that kind of use of deadly force is if that deadly force was connected to a larger moral ideal or moral purpose, and that purpose being. Right, protecting the rights of individuals against individuals who do not value those rights. Right, so it, it is an oversimplification to simply say that John Brown uh, committed violent acts and therefore was uh, un-American. That that skips some important uh, nuance that you would need to think through. The more important question would then therefore be what distinguishes right a person who is fighting in a justified way for uh, uh, for the rights of all men in a democratic society, from in a civil society, as Madison would say, from a person who is perhaps fighting for those rights, but in a way that is not justifiable, not good, okay. Uh, what, how, what, how do you draw that line? That's a, that's a much more complicated line than, well, did Brit John Brown kill anybody? Okay. Case closed. All right. That, that is obviously not the way uh, that we try uh, our uh, uh, forefathers uh, and, and deem some worthy of being memorialized uh, and, and others uh, uh, sort of uh, forgotten or, or um, demonized. Okay. Uh, the second oversimplification is John Brown broke the law. Uh, breaking the law is un-American, so John Brown is un-American. Okay? Uh, that line of reasoning also defies some very basic uh, historical realities and principles in a free society, okay? and that is that civil disobedience to tyrannical authority, as articulated in Thomas Jefferson's Declaration of Independence, is far from being a bad thing, rather a good thing. Okay, disobedience to tyrannical authority, all right, is obedience, as we discussed earlier, to the natural law, to the natural rights of man, and is therefore uh, uh, something that is in correspondence with uh, the, the most basic value system on which the United States was uh, law code is based. All right, so um, in other words, right, uh, uh, it, it is unreasonable Okay, uh, and 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 ultimately, right, uh, would collapse. The, the 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 argument would collapse if you simply said, "Well, John Brown broke the law, and so, and 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 no American hero breaks the law." Well, that's also uh, demonstrably not true. Okay, so uh, how do we judge this individual? Well, we're going to have to dive into some of the details here and reason through some of these warrants really carefully. Okay, uh, a great place to start uh, would be with John Brown's own uh, speech. Okay, so uh, a rhetorical situation here. Uh, I, I'll run through it quickly. Uh, he's just giving the speech prior to his death. Uh, he's just been uh, 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 convicted of treason and murder, um, uh, and he and basically uh, uh, deemed an enemy of the state, an enemy of the people. Okay, that's what it means to be a, a, a traitor of one's nation. You have become an enemy of that state. Uh, you have ceased uh, to be a law-abiding citizen uh, and begun to be an enemy of the law-abiding citizens in that nation. Okay, uh, John Brown, uh, who is 59 years old at the time, is our speaker. He's speaking to any American who's following the case. And his purpose okay, uh, is simply to assert that what is being done to him is unjust, all right? That, that, the, that, that he is not a traitor. Uh, he is not a murderer. 
uh, and that he does not feel bad or any remorse for his actions, okay? And the reasoning that he uses to defend these assertions, all right, uh, are important and need to be dealt with uh, whether you are taking a positive or negative stance on Brown, okay, whether you are uh, on his defense team, right, in, as, as the kind of historical lawyer here, or on the prosecution team uh, as his historical uh, prosecutor, okay? So uh, the first thing that he argues, right, is that uh, his, his goal was simply to free the slaves, not all right, to incite rebellion and to make insurrection. Well, uh, that's kind of a difficult statement to square, uh, square yourself with because he was at Harper's Ferry trying to steal a whole bunch of weapons, right? Uh, it, it, you know, uh, he's, he's not just engaging peacefully in the Underground ra Railroad as he has before, right, which he clarifies uh, in uh, the, the, the sentence above, but rather like he's at Harper's Ferry, which is a military arsenal, and he's trying to take guns from, from them and, and give them to the slaves. Well, if this is not a bold-faced lie or the ravings of a madman, right, uh, then the only way that we can really understand this is that uh, his goal uh, and, and the goal that he stated throughout the course of his trial was that I was not trying to, uh, to sort of incite or kick up a massive widespread rebellion in which slaves led by me or other slaves or whoever were fighting a pitched war against the government, okay? My goal was to allow these slaves the opportunity to walk away from their masters, to assert their natural rights, uh, to, to assert their natural right to free uh, the inalienable freedom, the inalienable rights to pursue life, liberty, and happiness according to their own terms, and all right, if stopped, which the rascally uh, you know slave owners tend to do, you know they don't simply say, "All right, well, have a nice life," right? When stopped, to be able, like any human being should, to defend the enemies of their natural rights. So the goal is not a widespread, widespread rebellion. The goal is freedom. The guns are a means to that end. All right? So that reasoning it, it sort of casts Brown's actions in a slightly different light. All right? Um, the goal here, according to Brown, uh, is not violence, but rather freedom. Okay. Um, well... It led to violence, though. So there's an objection that needs to be satisfied. Okay. Uh, another objection that he raises is that uh, he views uh, the judgment that is passed on him as being just fundamentally uh, duplicitous or a reflection of a double standard uh, in American society as a whole. He argues basically that everyone is outraged uh, and scandalized by the fact uh, that he uh, exerted violent force uh, to to pursue the freedom of the slaves, but uh, if he had exerted violent force to say pursue the 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 freedom of those that American society, the rich, the powerful, the intelligent, the so-called great, uh, in other words, uh, if, with respect to his audience, all those who would typically be associated as fully human, all right, or or typically uh, be associated with valuable members of American society. If he were fighting against the the the, the tyrants, okay, that that had come and stolen away uh, the, the 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 mothers, the fathers, the brothers, and the sisters of normal white Virginians, all right, and he was doing whatever he could to get those back, as a, he would be heralded as a freedom fighter. Okay, uh, and and the individuals that lost their lives standing in his way, right, would be understood as uh, necessary and justified sacrifices for the larger obedience to natural law. Okay, uh, but you know he's fighting for uh, uh, a group of people who are traditionally <laughs> considered subhuman, uh, or at least treated as such, uh, institutionally uh, rejected. Uh, uh, and, and ultimately not counted as, as valuable members of the human race. 
Uh, and because of that, what he did was an outrage. Well, he, he's simply pointing out the fact that that double standard simply hollows out the proceedings uh, of the trial as a whole. In other words, the judgment that has been passed on him is unjust. All right. Uh, th then he goes on in the next paragraph to, to point at uh, uh, biblical principles. All right. Uh, John Brown was a Bible believing Christian. Okay. Um, he was somewhat complicated uh, uh, in his interpretation uh, of the scriptures. Uh, and perhaps, uh, again, arguably, I'm not going to, I'm trying to stay neutral here. Okay. I don't want you to know what I think. Uh, but, but obviously, a complex uh, uh, man and who had a complex relationship with the commands of the scriptures. But here he basically says that in this courtroom, if we seem to acknowledge the law of God uh, or, or nature's God or, 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 and the natural laws that God, the God of the universe, has imposed on, on, on that world, which is why we're like swearing on the Bible and stuff in here, right? If, if we're doing that and we're doing it in a way that is meaningful, okay, well, I'm the one who, who, who is obeying the commands uh, of, of Scripture. I uh, am endeavoring to do unto others as I would have them do unto me. If I were enslaved and my family were sold out from under me uh, uh, and, 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 and my marriage covenant, uh, covenant was uh, undercut by my adulterous and lusty master, <laughs> then I wouldn't want that. I, I would want someone to come and give me a gun and say, hey, assert your freedom, walk away. All right? Uh, well, it, it also says to remember uh, uh, them that are in bonds as bound with them. He's simply quoting from Scripture and defending his own actions according to their obedience of this sort of uh, uh, commonly acknowledged higher law, uh, biblical authority. Okay. Um, he, he, he simultaneously is very clearly characterizing himself as a martyr, okay? uh, a kind of uh, Christian martyr and also a kind of uniquely American uh, Christian martyr. Uh, as he rebels against the injustice uh, that is being done uh, in the United States uh, uh, and in the institutions of the United States, for instance, like its law code uh, uh, and Virginia's law code, okay, more specifically as a state in those United States, all right, uh, uh, and, and the ways in which their, their, their actions defy uh, both natural law and uh, in, in Brown's view, uh, the God that instituted those natural laws, right? Uh, this is further uh, reflected uh, in his letter to his wife, okay, uh, which simply continues the process of characterizing him uh, as an individual who uh, was enacting, uh, in, in the best way that he seemed to know how, his own beliefs, uh, beliefs that were given to him by a, quote, holy God. All right, uh, that that make uh, his death a, a murder uh, in his own mind, uh, and and continue on uh, uh, in the letter just to to simply offer uh, very peaceful uh, and and reasonable advice to his uh, to his children. Right, uh, uh, simply uh, read your Bible every day. Right, he's not like telling them to go and slit the throat of the nearest uh, you know uh, United States governor. Uh, he's not uh, telling anyone uh, to kill anyone. Uh, or continue on in this process. Yeah, he's simply counseling his family uh, to continue pursuing the God uh, that he views as uh, the uh, sort of primary moving force behind his actions. Okay, so uh, again, a complex kind of man and a complex kind of portrait of a man who who viewed himself as an agent of God's justice on earth, okay? Well, what separates his uh, kind of violent attempt, okay, uh, uh, by whatever means necessary to, 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 to make those beliefs uh, uh, part uh, of the society around him, to make those beliefs, uh, to enact those beliefs, to incarnate those beliefs, uh, as human beings all throughout human history and specifically throughout United history, uh, United States history, uh, have attempted to do and have been heralded, right, as free people with free minds and free, free hearts because they were doing it, okay? So how do we deal with these uh, sources, okay? Obviously, John Brown thinks of himself very 
you know, in a in a in a biased light, right? He he thinks that he is justified. He thinks that what he's done uh, is good. So obviously, his letters are not going to impeach his own credibility, uh, and n neither is his last public speech. But rather, they're going to affirm it. So if you are going to undermine the memorialization of John Brown as a hero, uh, then uh, it would be prudent for you to undermine some of these uh, notions, right? Uh, some of these ways that John Brown thinks of himself. And you need to persuade me that John Brown thought of himself wrongly, that his actions were indeed uh, traitorous, uh, that they ought not be emulated, and that they do not resonate with American values. Uh, and on the flip side, if you are supporting the memorialization of John Brown as an American hero, okay, then it would be prudent for you uh, to confirm John Brown's self-assessment. Okay? He's certainly not proclaiming to be a perfect man, but what he is definitely claiming to be uh, in both his speech and in his last letter is a man who has been unjustly judged by an unjust society that needs to be radically altered and abolished in order to be realigned with natural law and the God who instituted that natural law. Sounds a whole lot like the reasoning of the Founding Fathers in their violent rejection of British colonial authority. What is different between their collective rebellion and his personal one. Have a great day. Keep thinking about these things. Hope this adds some nuance uh, and also gave you some direction in your argument.